Hi, I'm a kind of fortunate. Uh, welcome to the new edition. Our theme this year is swimming for health and wealth. And our topic today is stats and turns, but we are mainly going to concentrate on stats. Well, yes, you are most welcome to today's session. And we are going to look at stats and turns. Welcome. Okay. Let's not waste time. Um, now, you are going to first define them. After having a clear understanding of their definitions, then we can go and dig deeper into further detail. Okay, let's go straight forward to stats. What is a stat? Now, a stat is a technique used uh, during entry of water and it can include the grab, the track, head first entries, uh, shallow angle dives, uh, backs, backstroke entries. So those are the, some of the things we are going to look at when we talk about the stats. Then when we go to turns, we shall see that turns are techniques used to turn around in a pool, for example, if you are swimming and you, you, you reach the end of uh, the 25 meters, you have to turn around and finish your 50 meters. So, you can only turn around using those techniques, not just turning anyhow. There are techniques used. And uh, those include the flip turn, uh, the open turn, as we shall see. Now, the importance of these stats and turns um, is majorly to increase the efficiency of a swimmer. And these techniques are mostly used by a competitive swimmer uh, because competitive swimmers need as much efficiency as possible for them to finish a race in the shortest time possible. Um, so, as I told you, uh, Today our major emphasis is on the stats and in our next uh, tutorial we shall also concentrate on turns. So today we are only going to look at the stats. Now about the stats we are going to first look at um, head first entries. Now what are head first entries? Now these head first entries are called head first entries but mostly <laughs> when you observe that entry it is not the head which enters water first, not really. Uh, it's the tips of the fingers which enter first, yeah? then followed by the hands, uh, the upper body, then finally the entire body enters and the legs enter last. So it's not really the head which enters first, it's the fingers. Okay, uh, we shall see those details further. Uh, Let's first look at the safety considerations. Now, before you do the, uh, you attempt to do the head first entries, what should you put into consideration? And below are them, are those considerations which you should first consider, which you, which you should first look at before you attempt to do any head first dive. First of all, you should follow all the safety rules, excluding none. Hmm? When you reach at the pool, <laughs> first, uh, first talk to the lifeguard. Hmm? He should direct you to where the rules are listed. Mostly they are pinned at the entry, uh, at the entrance. So you look at them, analyze them, and follow them. Don't exclude any. All rules are equally important. Because when you break one, <laughs> you, you pay the consequences. You suffer the consequences. So, you should follow all the rules, as I've said. Two, uh, you should only practice the dives in water which is 90 feet or more or greater. Now, it has been um, found out according to research that most, uh, most injuries 
which swimmers get uh, due to dives uh, occur in water which is shallow in water less than 5 feet eh? so that should be put into considerations before you attempt to do a head first dive you first have to be sure of the depth of water and you have to have supervision yeah you should do uh, dives under the supervision of um, a technical personnel okay let's go to the next one you should ensure that no obstacles are in the water <laughs> obstacles can be very dangerous now assuming there is a stone a big stone yeah in the water you dive you hit your head on the stone my friend you will face it rough you may even die or else you may get a brain damage so before you attempt uh, to do any head first dive make sure there is no obstacle at all whether it is a human being or any physical obstacle make sure all those ones are, are not there so you first observe first be sure that there is no obstacle uh, you should be sure of the depth so those are the things which are usual but most people ignore them it is they are very 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 crucial to someone's life now once you are not sure of what is uh, underneath the water or sure of the depth don't attempt to do a head first dive my friend will die or you get an injury which which we don't want at all you are very precious to this world um, so if you are not sure of the depth or of what is below the surface of the water just do uh, either a straddle jump or a compact jump yeah, you know or mostly a straddle jump you, at least you injuries will minimize you rather hurt your, your legs rather than hurting your head eh? at least the legs but the head my friend <laughs> you tell me okay so let's proceed um, so the other consideration you should you should do, have in mind is um, do not dive at the shallow end I repeat do not dive at the shallow end my friend that is risking as you, you will see in uh, a video I will show you it is very dangerous to dive in the shallow end when you are just learning to do the dives yeah? maybe for professionals they know how to treat the shallow dive uh, sorry the shallow end but for you who is a beginner don't attempt hmm? okay let's proceed that's not waste time um, next to be put into consideration is uh, clear the deck area make sure there is no kickboard no flippers at least like keep them a distance away from you make sure the deck area is uh, is cleared and um, also make sure that uh, uh, that the deck area is not slippery there should be no water the deck area should be dry because once it is slippery <laughs> my friend you may you may get an injury which you didn't expect yeah so to avoid that the deck area should be cleared of any obstacle and um and uh, it should be dry yeah so next don't dive in murky water murky means cloudy water water which is unclear water which water which is very turbid so make sure when you are diving you only dive in water which is clear because in clear water you can even easily distinguish that this water is shallow or this water is deep or you can even see obstacles in the water if at all they are there but if the water is unclear my friend you don't know what is underneath you can't see through the water so don't attempt to do any dive in murky or cloudy water okay all right so we have seen those safety considerations which are key to your safety at the pool before you do any head first entry now what are the recommendations for those pool owners pool owners are recommended to 
put up posters hmm, if possible or you can use any no any, any no diving no diving in quotes hmm, in quotes so you can use any no diving um sign for example um some um paint those words no diving near the deck area at the shallow end so they put the word shallow end no diving so that someone who, who may want to attempt to dive if at all he sees that um, there is that uh, limitation they will not attempt to dive yeah um then you can also put up a poster on a fence or on a wall but near the pool of course or at the entrance yeah so that and um, what you should make sure is that you you put those writings in contrasting colors colors which can be easily seen by someone and read and words should be clear and big enough for someone to uh, to actually to read them because they can use it as an as an excuse that i didn't see anything the words were very small huh? <laughs> So that may be an excuse for someone to say that's why I died at the shallow end and I got an injury because the um, actually the words were not clear. Oh, make sure that you always check in the case the words uh, are like fading out. You you re, you repaint. You add another paint. Um. So. And um, another recommendation is that incompetent swimmers should not at all be allowed to dive from the blocks. Yeah. Now, most pools hmm, have diving blocks, and those blocks yeah, are built high above eh, from the deck. So now, these blocks, in case someone is uh, a beginner. Uh, in diving they may get injuries yeah and if at all they are to dive using those blocks they should first get familiar with diving <coughs> sorry uh, with diving then they will use those blocks and um, they should only use those diving blocks and supervision so let's have a look at um, some of those um, the signs, hmm? there's no diving signs. Let's have a look. Here they are. Yes. Okay. Let's have a look at them. Okay. So you can see the upper one. That upper one. They say shallow water, no diving. So it is clear. But you see that word water is fading out. So when you realize that, you should add another paint so that <laughs> there's no excuse yeah um then uh you can see this one down they say warning shallow water no diving you can see that uh drawing there they say you should not dive danger yeah so those are some of the ways you can put up the no diving signs then they say caution diving into the pool uh, could cause serious injuries or even fatal um, injuries. Yeah, hitting the boat, you may hit the bottom. Uh, so, um, so hitting the bottom is extremely dangerous and should be avoided. So, those are some of the no diving signs which can be put up. Uh, to avoid such injuries yeah so let's proceed let's proceed wow <laughs> yeah let's look at the minimum requirements which you need for you to yeah to to learn or to begin uh, practicing the um, the head first entries okay yeah so let's proceed the minimum requirements uh, include you should have the ability to float <laughs> my friend now uh, once you don't know how to float i assure you you will have the fear of doing a head first entry because you are not sure 
if I go deep into the water, will I be able to come up, come back up? <laughs> you have that, you know, you have that fear at heart. And that is why most people fear to do the head first entries. So to avoid that, you should be familiar with the water. You should learn how to float. That is where, uh, that is why in, in our next video, we shall look at the watermanship skills. Those are skills which you require for you to survive in water as an individual. Hmm? Uh, those include the trading, you know, scaling water. So we shall look at those ones practically so that you, you become familiar or you get used to water, to the water environment. You can be able to float. And when you are able to float, you become comfortable. Water becomes your friend, my friend. Okay. So you should be able to float for you to attempt to the first entry. Because assuming you go deep in the water hmm? <laughs> and you cannot float, hmm? so how will you come back on top? Hmm? In the case uh, you go very deep, so you should have those that ability to float. Two, you should have you should be able um, to swim back to the sides of the pool. So that means you should be at least you know at least knowing uh, the flip. Uh, sorry, uh, the freestyle hmm? should be knowing at least breaststroke. You know, at least backstroke, so that in case you dive. Eh, you can come back to the sides of the pool. So should, you should be knowing how to swim. In other words, how can you attempt to do the dive when you don't know how to swim? That, that means you are jumping steps. There are ladders which you should first reach. There are levels, yeah? In other words, there are levels you should first reach for you to begin attempting to do the head first entries. Yeah? Okay. Um, three. You should be able to keep arms overhead. In other words, I don't know if I can, I will demonstrate it in the next video. You see the you watch the video uh, after these lecture notes, and um, you should make sure that the arms are straight and well above the head, covering the ears. You get it? So they should be straight. And as you are diving, you should look at your feet so that you don't uh, do the the belly flop. Yeah. There are some people who dive and they hit the stomach, yeah, as if they are slapping the water. They hit the stomach on the water. So, and that is not a good dive, yeah, you know. It's, it even sounds weird. Somebody dives and uh, <laughs> slaps the water. That is weird, you know. Uh, okay. So, um, uh, let's look at the fourth. You should have comfort in the, while in the deep water. Still, that one brings us to familiarity with water. Eh? How can you develop hmm, your comfort in the water? First of all, one way you can do it is by doing some those underwater dives. Yeah, those underwater dives help you to to be friendly, not to love water. Because when you are under there, under the water, you realize that water is very calm. Yeah, you realize that water is very friendly to us. So. You can do those uh, underwater, underwater. You can do that underwater swimming. Um, then also, one way I also got used to water, hmm, which made me comfortable when I'm in water, is that I used to jump. You know, you stand at the deck, you jump, feet first. You go at the bottom of the pool. Then you come up slowly by slowly, using your arms, huh? pushing water downwards. So when you come on top, you find that huh? you are very comfortable in water indeed. So that trick can also help you to become comfortable while you are in the water. Okay? So those are the minimum requirements. You know, they are, um, we shall look at more uh, later on. Okay. Here we have a question. Why not do the head first dive? In other words, why is it that most people do not want to do the head first dive? Huh? Yet it is very necessary. And now, here are some of the major reasons. Fear of injury. Now, some people have experienced others suffer from injuries. Um, 
some of these injuries can be you know head injuries for example you hit your head on the obstacle on an obstacle in the water uh head on collisions you collide with a fellow swimmer for example a swimmer was swimming towards eh, where you were towards the uh, the pool side and for you are diving so you do a head-on collision um the other one could be um, um a back injury you know a spinal injury now when you dive poorly you know there are some people who dive and they bend their back so much eh? they bend it so when you over bend it you you and you are diving you know pressure will be exerted mm? you will bend more the water will exert pressure on this upper body and the legs so the bend will uh, sorry the back will be bent more and um, <laughs> my friend you may not like it you have a back pain for like full month or even a week so personally I got to that injury when I was just beginning to uh, to learn the dives and um, that taught me a lot that whenever you are doing something first do research don't just eh, dive into it anyhow you get it so even in this it applies in every field before you attempt to do anything first do thorough research read about it ask people who have done it before you know even if it is a business ask people who have done it before and you are good to go but for you just if because you've seen someone doing it you also want to do it eh? <laughs> you've seen someone diving very well you also want to do it out of the blue yeah first ask him how do you do it hmm? how can i do it better without getting injuries remember as i told you in the previous video for flip turn um uh if you want it in fact you can check in the description below i will link it uh so that you watch it um when you watch that video i told you that whenever you are swimming whenever you're doing any swimming activity safety first hmm? safety should be put into consideration because water is our friend but it is not our <laughs> best friend eh? so it is not our friend at all times it can get disorganized anyhow and you die hmm? you can die at any one moment even if you are a good swimmer however good you may be a swimmer but you can get an injury because I've seen that I've seen this practically personally uh, when I was trying out the <laughs> butterfly hmm? as I was coming out to breathe I swallowed some water and it shocked me so under that circumstance you are stressed you lose balance you lose control and you may end up drowning yeah even if you have the watermanship skills so you should do actually be very 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 uh, careful so fear of injury is one of those um, hindrances to uh, as to why most people fear to do the head first in uh, entries uh -huh. <clears throat> two fear of distance my friend there are some people who who cannot even do free uh, swim freestyle 25 meters so how do you expect someone who fears such a distance <laughs> to dive because that means if we dive he has to swim up to, up to the extreme end which is fearing so that individual will be discouraged from doing the head first interview so such a such an individual who has such fear they should be encouraged uh, and they should be uh, they should first get familiar to swimming the whole length of the pool that is how they can gain uh, that strength hmm? that courage to learn the head first entries otherwise if you cannot swim the whole length of the pool <laughs> i don't think you can do the head first dive you have that fear that if i dive then that means i have to proceed and finish the whole length of the pool yeah so you will be discouraged okay number three fear of depth eh? <laughs> most fear most people most swimmers fear the deep end mostly beginners okay i won't say all but beginners yeah beginners fear the deep end <laughs> i don't know why so that one brings us back to eh, comfort you should be comfortable when you are in water eh? and um one of the ways to 
get used to the deep end as I told you earlier on. Stand near the deck at the deep end. Jump into the water, legs first. When you are about to reach the bottom, uh, bend your knees as if you are squatting. You get it? So then begin pushing water downwards, press water downwards. As you are pressing water downwards using your arms, it means you are coming on top of the water. Relax, relax, relax. And when you do that several times, so you will come on top. Hmm? When you do that several times, you realize that deep water is your friend. The same way shallow water is a friend to you. So, that is a technique which can help you so, so much. Okay. So, what are the applications um, of um, freestyle? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Of um, this head first inter entries. The head first entries um, are done in the freestyle. Yeah. When you are, uh, when you are Swimming freestyle, begin with the head first entry. In a swimming breast stroke, same. In a swimming butterfly stroke, same applies. Now, we shall see that also the side stroke, same applies. So, we shall see that in the back stroke, uh, it is a different case. All right. Yeah. Let's go to first principles uh, of head first entries. They will give us a clear view of what. Uh, head first ent entries actually actually are right now they are called head first entries but in actual sense it's not the head which enters first it's the tips of the fingers which enter first followed by the hands the arms and then the rest of the uh, the body enters in the sequence I've given yeah and um, a typical head first entry is uh, is characterized by three major uh, sequences of events and the first one is the starting stationary position um, and then uh, the takeoff position uh, which you can also call it uh, the propulsion uh, in fact you can call it the propulsion or moment of propulsion hmm? then finally followed by entry of water so let's look at them in detail Let's look at them in further detail. As you can see, on our left, yeah, on your left, you can see that column where we have two photos. One is brighter and the other one is somehow darker. Okay, so when you look at that photo in the left corner, left upper corner, you can see that the, the swimmer was holding on two. Uh, the starting block, yeah. Though uh, his toes were not gripping onto it, but he was holding onto it. Then, when you look at the photo <coughs> um, on the bottom left, yeah, you can see that he was doing both. He was holding onto the starting block and also gripping his toes onto the starting block so this is the position I recommend you the second one yeah now for the uh, stationary position uh, swimmers do it differently depending on their level of swimming most of swimmer of the swimmers who are not competitive they like starting from the sides of the pool so they enter into the water and they push off eh? while in water they push off from the wall and they begin their strokes though for competitive swimming you have to learn this because it is necessary there is no competitive race where they will allow you to begin from inside the water so you have to learn the correct position of a stationary position yeah all right let's go to the takeoff now uh the takeoff has uh, actually it involves it has it has three photos you can see one this one which is big yeah which is larger whereby someone is um, actually demonstrating how you should position your arms they should be well above the head and they should be covering the ears so they should be close together yeah you get it as you are diving into the water 
the way he is demonstrating though they are not so too close yeah all right so when you look at this smaller photo on the right upper corner you can see him pushing off that is what we call the takeoff yeah you are pushing off from the starting block using your toes which we are gripping onto the starting block so i recommend you to grip your toes onto the starting block because when you are pushing off they give you more momentum they propel you much further yeah then when you look at the lower uh, the, the still uh, in the takeoff section you can see this other photo when he's now trying to gain the streamline position yeah all right let's go to the entry now when you look at um, this swimmer here he's actually entering the water with his uh, with the tips of the fingers entering first then it will be followed by by the hands then the arms and then the rest of the body will enter for you to do a perfect dive you should make sure that you are as streamlined as possible and um, one common mistake that um, beginners actually do they tend they want to raise their heads eh? in or else they want to look in front now what will happen when you look in front where you are going where you are diving what will happen actually is that you will do a belly flop you will hit your belly onto the water which is painful actually it is painful so i recommend you uh, the best trick which i actually use for me to do a good dive is that i put my chin onto the chest then i look eh? i look at my feet at the tips of my feet i look at my toes or in fact my nails yeah so that one helps me to maintain that streamline position and i don't do a belly flop because i'm actually looking at my toes so i will maintain a streamline my arms are well above the head covering the ears and um that one will help me to move faster in water as i'm diving into the water um then another recommendation is that make sure that you are streamlined until you lose the momentum yeah so you, as you are entering the water you should stay streamlined then when you reach under the water you stay streamlined don't lose focus stay streamlined until you lose the momentum then you begin your your stroke whether butterfly freestyle um breast stroke so um i hope uh, these photos have taught you something you can pause and observe them critically you can analyze them yes you you can analyze them critically and give recommendations where possible you can comment and tell me no this one is wrong this one is wrong okay yeah so let's proceed to the videos i hope these photos have shown you a clear picture let's move on to the videos which i i, I captured about the head first um entries all right let's go I'm about 5.5 meters tall so how deep do you think this water is it must be around three meters diving at such a depth is very dangerous for a beginner and he may most likely get injuries so don't attempt to dive at the shallow end let's begin with a free fall whereby the swimmer will uh, dive without pushing off from the deck like that after getting used to that we shall do a slight push off from the deck as you can see using his toes which we are gripping onto the deck then finally he makes a strong push off from the deck as you can see strong and you push forward let's try now to practice when we are standing you show me how you should position your legs then touch the gutter how you should position your arms yes there he goes so make sure you look at the toes arms above the head and covering the ears then you are good to go don't forget stay streamlined 
until you enter water and keep streamlined thank you very much for watching i hope you have enjoyed the video uh you can like it share it with your friends you can and if you are new to this channel i advise you to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one and better than this one and in our next video we shall look at the back backstroke entries and um, we also continue with turns thank you